So where we left off last time, we were at 99% on the report card, just 1% short. And the hint it gave me was scabby, which I was expecting. I figured I'd missed a few of them. But after cross-referencing everything on Map Genie, I was only one short, or I'm only one short. And it is up here on this laser, and I'm a little annoyed that I have not gotten it. Of course, there's mites right here. Uh, because I talked about this when I was getting the one on the other laser. But I guess I just never came back here in. did it. But for this one, you do have to build, or at least that's like the way they want you to do it, is to build up to it to get it. I'm just trying to find a clear spot to look up. There are other tricks you can do. There's one you can do with a grass plank, where you can use it to kind of use as a stepping stone to get a little higher. Then I've seen people say they use the mant launch from the statue. Here's a pretty clear spot. The firework launcher. I did a video on this and how it can shoot you up in the air. It's a pretty fun thing to do, and I'm really hoping it has a use right here, right now. Thankfully, it's got unlimited ammo. Make sure to have dandelion tufts, though, if you do this. I don't remember how to stand. Ha ha! Wow, what a beauty! First try. And right up here on it, that is incredible. I thought I was gonna sit here and try it a few times at least, but I got more than high enough just off the first launch. That's amazing. And that should be it though for my scabby. So I'm gonna hop back down here into the spacer and uh, see if there's any more hints it's gonna give me if I'm still at 99%. And there it is, 100%, got the super win. Nice, I super won. So now with all of that done and getting the super win, the last thing I wanna do before heading into New Game Plus is to completely fortify the space and build all the things I've been wanting to build. Uh, I did finish this one, it looks all right. I, it looked better before I kept going up, but I wanted it to be tall to get closer to that laser over there. But it's fine, the inside is what I like and I'll show that off uh, later i'll probably do like a base walkthrough when i'm done with this but next i want to complete this one this one's still been unfinished for pretty much since i got to this point for what is this like the whole series now uh, so i want to finish this one i still don't know what exactly what i'm going to do up top hi there post editor kk here so what i decided to do on this build was take these mushroom brick columns i had on each side and build them up one more layer i kept the spiral staircases on one side and bounce webs on the other. I wanted the bounce webs because they get you up to the top a lot faster. And I wanted to do the spiral staircases because it gets you to each level within the storage room a little easier. In the middle here, I wanted to just build it up a little bit, but keep the top open because I like having access directly into the storage area from that zip line that goes overhead. It's not only practical for getting in there a little faster from adventuring, but it's also just really fun jumping down there. And what we're seeing now is me building a bridge from the weed stem and grass plank storage area to what will be the receiving side of the new weed stem zip line. I really needed a way to get zip lines faster because the area right over here is just really dense, but not so much with weed stems. And so it's kind of frustrating and annoying to gather weed stems on this side. And of course, there's mites just slowly getting closer to my base. And also I immediately got distracted with this build and started building this walkway that uh, went underneath the new building because it just kind of went at an angle, it was really cool. Then I connected it up to two of my already existing walkways plus this field station over here, which by the way, the rest of this video is gonna be in this format of me doing post commentary, kind of like my old medieval city builds. So if you really were into that, then hopefully you enjoy this one. I know it's been a while since I've done something like this. Also, the reason I am doing it like this is because I really needed to cut the video length down. It would have been so long to just kind of keep it going as I have been. And also this is gonna be kind of like a multi-part series because I didn't finish it all in this video. Uh, so definitely if you're enjoying this style, you know, stick around for the next one for sure. Maybe even three, we'll see how long it takes me to do the next part of my base expansions here. So what we're looking at is the scaffolding of the receiving side of the zip line. Um, this does get altered uh, one or two more times. For the most part, this is the shape it's keeping. I did do grass plank floors as I have been doing just so I can utilize the grass planks so they're not just kind of piling up or just getting unused in general. Now for this one, compared to the one I did in my medieval city, which if you haven't seen that one, you can go check it out, but I did make improvements in this one that were pretty necessary. The first one you're about to see 
uh, right here, the zip line on the receiving side, I did elevate it. And the reason I did that is because when the weed stems come in or the grass planks come in, they get stuck under the weeds or the uh, zip line. They'll pile up right there. And then when you come and render them in, they'll shoot off in multiple directions. It's fun to watch, but if you're trying to gather a lot of weed stems, it doesn't necessarily work. So what I'm trying to do now is get the sending side in line with the receiving side. Um, I want it to have less options of clipping buildings that are pre-existing between. And also I am connecting it all the way over here between the sandbox and picnic table because there is a high concentration of weed stems in this area. Like just look at all this just right here. And this goes all the way in front of the sandbox. Plus there's some over there by the picnic table. And I do ultimately land on building it on this rock because it's almost perfectly in line with the receiving side, plus it's elevated a little bit more, which is another improvement I made is the building is closer, like the top of the sending side is closer to the ground. So that way you're taking less damage jumping off of it, but I set it up to where you take no damage or you can take no damage jumping off of it. So right here, there's a little bit of a trick you can do when you're trying to get stuff in line. If you reload a save, your axis, the player axis of where you're looking does get reset. So right here, I'm looking straight ahead. It kind of gives me a line that I can base it off of to where I know um, the minimum that I can do the sending side on because you do want it to be pointed down or uh, the receiving side to be a little lower than the sending side. So that way your weed stems can flow but you also don't want to make it too high because I've made that mistake and they go too fast and they just send every direction they just want to go. So for the floor up here, I wanted there to be enough space for me to set the large planks down without them being in the way of me moving around freely. And I made it to where I can do, I think four of them up there. I don't know if I'll ever utilize having four pallets up here, but it's there if I need it. And you can see right here, I always make the mis this mistake where I will build blueprints over areas I can't reach. So I have to delete the blueprints build everything underneath it, and then I put them back and rebuild those. That is a constant thing I do. But I will probably continue doing that because I like having the build set up um, to where I know what works and what doesn't work before I actually start building on it. The top of this bounce web part where I'm coming up, it does get altered uh, two times, I think. The first time I alter it because I can't get up there. Like I keep hitting my head and so I have to change it, but I eventually come back adjust the bounce web and then it works. Also right here, I finally got smart enough to put a platform that I can just jump up to so that way I'm not struggling trying to build stuff. So now that I have my basic line of sight set up, I can see what parts of the grass need to be removed and which ones can remain. Unfortunately, I did have to remove more than I thought I would. Um, even though the zip line wasn't necessarily in range, it was like reading it as it would be clipping. And then all this dry grass, I thought I had placed it just high enough to where I wouldn't have to touch the dry grass, but a lot of it still ended up getting in the way. So I eventually got it set up. As you can see, I got a clear line of sight, but you can also see there's an immediate problem where that ladybug was walking through the grass. And that does become apparent in just a moment of how it can affect the zip line. But just giving it a test on the way there, I am also close enough to the ground on the zip line for the bugs right there to become aggro at me. So that's pretty fun. I haven't been hit yet. Hopefully I don't get hit. I guess the mites and the ladybugs could be an issue there. And here we are just doing a little bit of a test. I was slightly disappointed at this because you can see I keep having some falling and I was like, wow, this is such a slow pace. And then I realized I could just stand to the side and then I can just kind of spam click the zip line just to get those going down. Give those some time to go and I follow behind them. So right up here, this ladybug walks through the grass at the perfect time just to knock me off. And we cannot have that, can we? So we, we took care of that. So collecting what I sent over, I was missing one weed stem of everything I sent, which was kind of disappointing uh, because I didn't send over a lot. And the fact that I was missing one made me worried about it, but my worries get rectified later on. Back on the sending side of the zip line, I built this kind of platforming jumping area that you get across with bounce webs. And I did no pre-planning for this. I built it expecting I would have to move stuff, but I got it perfect on the first try, just based off of what I knew about the bounce webs. I was really impressed with myself. All I had to do was adjust some angles on it, and you'll see in just a moment, landing perfect. It was phenomenal. On this side, I decided I wanted to make it to where you could fall onto the bounce webs to make it more consistent than just walking up to it. A couple more final touches here, and we'll experience it. Boink, boink. Perfect. It works so perfectly that you can do it backwards. You can fall right on it and you'll land. You can stop moving. It just, it was amazing. And this 
AFID was being really annoying, so I finally decided to take it out. So here's where I'm readjusting this bounce web. You can see I built half walls around it. Um, I didn't really like how that looked. So I adjusted this, I lowered its power to end up being 85% so I could put this doorway back in and that ends up being perfect. And so the whole line is just, it flows so well and I wanna do more of this. And right here, this is one of my improvements to keep you from taking fall damage because if you're carrying a pallet down, you cannot use a dandelion tuft. So I made this walkway that went underneath it and then a couple of platforms on the way down so you don't take any fall damage. But now it was time for a little bit more of a test of what I could send over. I did send over just over 200 weed stems during this test, which is, it's really fun to watch this. I don't know why, that's just really satisfying seeing all of them go on the zip line like that. So I came up here and I collected them all up and I immediately noticed another problem for all the, not all of them, but some of the weed stems were falling off on the front end. I'm guessing at the drop side, they were kind of colliding with each other and then sending them off. They of course could have been kind of glitching and just flinging off of one another on the ground. But out of the 212 I sent over, I collected 211. I was again only missing one and that made me feel a little bit better uh, prior to the first test where I sent over like 10 and I was missing one. So it was like, went from 10% down to half a percent, right? Less than half a percent. And of course, lighting on this side, I really wanted to make sure I did the lighting over here because it's so far away. These at the ends of the platforms, I do adjust to red. So it's kind of like a, like a dock light, I guess. Kind of like a warning light, like, hey, here's a ledge here you can hit. And then I lower all these down to the ground because they have such a fast fall off and I keep forgetting that. Um, and then I lower their brightness some too, so it's not just so much in your face brightness when you're in the building. And I didn't even think about the fact that I also connected up to the highest concentration of rocks that you can collect on the map. So it's got a rock collecting area as well. And now we're back on the receiving side. I wanted to make this building match the rest of the buildings in the area with the stone brick wrapped around the scaffolding. I did not plan for this, I wish I did. This was one of the adjustments I had to make to the building to make it work and look right. I do like how it turned out, it does look nice. And right here, you can kind of get a glimpse of the walkway and how it cuts through the underside of this building at an angle. It's not a 45 degree angle. It's more like a 20 to 30 degree angle through there. And it's just, it's kind of like one of the coolest geometric things I've done on here. And I am going to try and do that in more places because it does feel really cool walking through there. On this floor, I did have to widen it up on the sides by half a block. So um, I ended up doing these shelves around the stairs and then I did this split down the middle. I thought it looked pretty neat because it's kind of like where the weed stems or grass planks will come in. And here I am again for getting to do the blueprints under the floor. Or no, actually these blueprints got added after the floor. So this one's uh, my fault always, but a little less me being goofy with the blueprints. And of course the roof, I did want to completely enclose this side. Uh, it helps eliminate weed stems flying off in random directions. Cause if they do fly up, they'll, they'll hit something and fall back down. I'm sorry about the back and forth between day and night. If I had planned for this, I would have tried to get more daytime recording um, because you know, the nighttime kind of can be hard to see. Plus the back and forth can be a little annoying to watch. And we're getting in here to the final touches of the roof and the rest of the walls. And this time I was even smarter to have these little platformers to get up to the highest peaks that I couldn't really reach. And then I just break those down and we're done with those. And final touches, we just got railings and the lighting to do inside. These two firefly lanterns are uh, getting moved up to the ceiling right now. I, I just knew I wouldn't be able to reach them all the way up there. And so I figured I could build them and then place them in the right spot. And I really need to start doing that more often. And then I realized I forgot one and I just wanted to show you how complicated I made this for myself. I got it, yay, it's done. And then I made that one red to kind of match the other platforms across the way. And then lowered the brightness of all these again. So it's just not so much brightness right in your face uh, because it can kind of be straining. And then this uh, ant head candle I did not like where it was sitting, but I could not get it right. You can get them right in the center of that window. I just don't know why it wasn't working for me here. But now it was time to head on over and do a full test. I chopped down a lot of weed stems, like a lot No weed stems here. Just look at all those weed stems. I would say this is about half of what I cut down, maybe less. And then again, the satisfying view of watching them get sent across. Even them coming off the pallet 
sped up like this is really satisfying to watch. Then after collecting a whole lot more weed stems, I decided it was time to go over there and see what I have done. And this is really fun to watch, just the pile growing. It's really fun. And first glance, there's nothing on the ground. I don't know why I said first glance. There, were, there was nothing on the ground. It did, in fact, catch all of them, even though some of these are really close to the edge. So after everything collecting and putting away, I did send over 424 weed stems on this run, and I got 423. So again, just missing one. Don't know why that's the theme. Don't know where that one always goes to, but of the three times up to this point that I have sent them over, I was only missing one. After this, I didn't count um, because I just figured it was working smoothly enough that it wasn't necessarily any worry. And on to the next project. This building is just a facade. This is the base of my zipline tower. Its main purpose is to cover up the leaf there because I did not like how the leaf looked right next to this tower. Also, it made it really hard to like kind of put the tower all the way down to the ground. So it just kind of floating off the edge there. But this building does connect directly to it. Like I said, just a the facade. There's no purpose to it other than to look good. And I did do this one really fast. I guess I'm kind of ashamed of how fast I did it. I didn't really put in a lot of work to it. And there are already things I'm thinking about doing to change it up some. But this was something that's been bothering me for a long time and I really wanted to get it done. And on to the final project of this video. It is a water tower. It's completely unnecessary at this point in the game. This is something you'd probably want to do a lot earlier on. But having the charcoal canteen, it's, this is not necessary because you can just gather water anywhere you see it and it'll be clean and filtered. But this one, this building, is probably the most complicated thing I have ever built. Not material-wise, it doesn't require a lot of materials top to bottom, but I've changed it so many times. I have kept some of those changes in here. I felt it was very necessary for you to see those changes. But if you haven't seen one of these before, the first time I saw one was from See-Through. I don't know if he's the original inventor of this, but if he is, I definitely would give him credit for it. But you get the uh, dew collectors at the top and you put them really close together. When the water uh, spawns in, they bump each other off and then they fall down into the water containers down at the very bottom. So this first little bit is done. I took a step back. This was where I took my first change because I did not like how it was looking. Going up, it started looking too skinny, so I needed to do these corners. Now when I did these corners, coming back down and looking at it, I realized there were a few more issues. The base still feels too bulky, like it goes too high. And then having all of this um, weed stem walls at the top, there was just no, no layers there. It looked all really flat. So I took this the uh, foundation down a little bit and I took out the weed stem walls in the middle and I do change them up to be the uh, sturdy grass plank walls. And then uh, the walls, then I just use them to kind of fill in the blanks down here. So this way there wasn't a lot of destruction and then reconstruction that was unnecessary. Then of course to fill in all those spaces and then we are gonna take another step back and see that again, I do not like what I have done. <laughs> it's just, it always comes back to this foundation. So I altered it, I brought the foundation all the way down to the ground and then I made it skinny with these four corners coming all the way down. I used these uh, diagonal walls as transitions into the wood wall and it looks so much better. Just that made me feel so much better. It still has the girth down at the bottom. It still has supports going up and then it slowly goes in up until the very top, which is here we are, a lot of blueprints that we're looking at now. And I do have to kind of remove and replace a lot of blueprints as I do. But this is inside the, what is gonna be the water container at the very top. You will see me put in the dew collectors. I do six of them. I do them really close together. And then you'll also see me do the water containers down at the bottom. And we are coming up to the end of this video. So there are a few things I just wanna say real quick before we wind it up. The first thing is, if there's something you have seen in this video and you wanna see more of, I am gonna do a base tour once I get everything complete. So go ahead and let me know in the comments below so that way I know to cover it in that tour. And I'll cover it in any detail you wish me to. There are plenty of things that I've already built in this world prior to this video, and there are gonna be a few things that follow. And so I just kinda of wanna get them out there, and then I wanna show them all off in one video. Even now, I'm still learning new building tricks. By the way, I just learned something with the scaffoldings you can do. Uh, so I'll be using that probably whenever I get to the wall around the whole area. So that's gonna be a really fun thing to watch. 
But if you have enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. It does really help me out. Plus it kind of encourages me to make more videos, especially the ones that are being liked more. I do enjoy the building aspect of most games. I just, I haven't really gotten into it in a while because I haven't been able to commit as much time to it. I am wanting to do more of that and show you more of that. Also, if you've enjoyed it, feel free to like it and share it with somebody else you think will enjoy it. But with that, I am going to leave you with a couple of beauty shots across the new stuff I just built. So until next time, I'll see you.